Good evening, everybody. Two seconds. Good evening, good evening, good evening. How are you? <laughs> good evening. Hello, everyone. So this is uh, obviously quite a dour show, isn't it? This is this is not um, entertainment. And I've just been watching all of your comments as, as they've gone up here. Um, quite a dark, dour, depressing watch, as I think it had to be. Um, sleazy old man, says Hillary Jones. Um, I think, did you talk, I didn't see your coffee morning this morning, did you talk about whether this should have been made at all in the first place? Was that part of your discussion yeah, or not? Yeah, it was, but also uh, it was. Um, and it's quite interesting that those victims that are a part of it mm. very much wanted it to be made and very much want, they feel he got away with it and they feel that, um, that, you know, the more that, is known about these people that do these outrageous acts, atrocities in plain sight mm. should be learnt about. I think too often when things are done in plain sight, as was what I was saying this morning, is as any decent human being, you just can't believe. People wouldn't have been able to believe he was doing what he was doing. Mm, mm. It wouldn't enter your mind, would it? Mm, mm. And, I mean, clearly an evil sociopath. I'm just beg his belief that he would... Like, the, lots of little scenes just showing, I thought, really well the way that he just worked and wormed his way into situations. But... Always in an incredibly creepy way. Yeah, I mean, I think I think he did a... I, just, first of all, let's just talk about Steve Coogan. I mean, re a really challenging role to take on. Any good actor is going to have to really go to some dark fucking places in order to personify or perform this guy. I thought his voice was amazing. There was a weird aspect to him, which I seem to remember from Jimmy Savile when he was alive, where he was incredibly one note. He was incredibly monotone. Everything he did, he stayed at 11. I think it was weird because I felt the whole show, you could say, suffered or struggled under the duress of how he was so unsort of... Flappable. Well, not only unflappable, but he was so sort of unemotional and impassive in everything. And like he stayed... Like a sociopath. Yeah, like a sociopath. And so that, in a sense, really holds your arm's length. And I was kind of reminded of of how he would kind of go into that sort of jokey, you said his physicality of how he'd walk and how he'd kind of kiss women up the arms and all that kind of stuff. But he was, I was struck by how undramatic I thought the whole thing was. And I think the BBC, just quickly on the making of this, were caught in a bit, are caught in a bit of a difficult situation with making any drama. Because if they run towards the drama and make it dramatic, there's a quick, easy accusation that they're being sensationalist or titillating or exploiting terrible experiences and activities to make drama. And I think, interestingly, the first half hour, 40 minutes of this, it didn't know how to pace itself. And for me, the whole drama, I don't know if anyone else agrees, weirdly, there was nothing surprising, got interesting to me at the point that he met with the BBC. Yes, and I think, well, I read out today a quote from, I think it was a journalist in The Independent, and it was a really good, it was really succinct, I wish we had it now, but... To paraphrase it, she said it really is quite disgraceful because obviously she'd watched it all and they drop things like the news night. They, they, that's not included where, where they drop the news night and all those moments that the BBC turned their back on what was going on. Mm. So there is something really disgusting about the BBC making money out of mm. the, this beast, this monster that was protected in mm. many ways for so many years. And then to just not add in where they had dropped the ball. Do we not know? I mean, that, and their that, defense, and she, uh, Sorry, they, and does this person say that that doesn't happen in any of the further episodes? They've watched the whole series? Well, they dropped the whole story about them cutting the news night where all was going to be revealed in 2011. Right, right. Um, I mean, Charlotte Moore... Is it Charlotte Moore's um, comeback was that all the way through the four episodes, there are con there are moments where we're shown how the BBC dropped the ball. And I think we saw a bit of that tonight. I think there is something weird about the BBC making a programme about this, if it isn't a full expose of where, where, where their culpabilities were. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I, 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 I could, you could, you could argue, does anyone think this? I felt really uncomfortable about the inclusion of the real talking heads at the beginning. 
and at the end. And I'll tell you why I felt uncomfortable about it. Because they didn't give them enough time. No, I couldn't help but feel that you could argue that even even though these people have said they're, that obviously they're willing to be part of it, they want the show to be made and what have you, could you argue that this is yet further use of victims to further... Well, you could. To make more You content. could, but when you've got the actual victims who are grown adults saying, I, am, I want to be a part of this, I feel like he never suffered, he wasn't caught, he got to 84 years old, he died very happy with himself that he got away with everything. And for us, it's really important that it's validated. Mm. Our feelings and our story is told so that people know just what we went through. Mm. Because there's always with victims of, of, you know, as most often with victims of sexual assault, there is a long period of time and sometimes people go to their deathbed with it of keeping silent, mm. of hiding their own completely unnecessary shame, you know, no victim mm. should have your shame, and also for the sake of family and friends and work colleagues, and in fact, the assailant, they have to keep quiet for so many different reasons. So I think sometimes, and every victim is different, to have the chance to really tell the story is actually quite um, mm. soothing for them. Faith Goodman asks a really good question. I, I'd be really curious to know, that scene in the BBC when you've essentially got commissioners all chivering around uh, talent, and I hate to say it, but for me, what was really, really struck me about that scene with the commissioners and controller, entirely not dissimilar to how they are now around talent. I mean, you know, when you feel you're sitting upon talent, there is that sort of frenzy of excitement and have you got the right person and breaking someone in. I mean, it was interesting to have Jimmy Savile at this point in his career, seeing him as actually this maverick, you know, this kind of almost avant-garde, wasn't he? He was doing something with the youngsters that was considered hip, cool. He was connecting with the kind of old clientele. Follow me like the pie pie. Exactly. Um, and I thought it was. I thought that scene was interesting. But it'd be interesting to know whether, like, the woman that was in that scene, are they rewriting in any way the extent to which there was always someone who was having a sort of you know, an yeah. arched thought about them. Yeah, that, Even... that, she was the place, she was placed in there, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to tell you, wouldn't touch him with a barge pole. Mm. We've heard from Luxembourg, he's a bit of a weird, a bit of a creep, overbearing, mm. horrible man. And I wonder if so the that, same thing was happening with the That's the BBC guy. giving the tick of saying that we kind of, we did, there were some of us that knew what was going on. But I also wonder whether a similar thing was happening with the porter or the guy at the hospital too. You know, he, he was the one clearly suspicious, he's feeling a bit... What do we think of Steve Coogan, generally? I mean, I... I he, the voice was amazing. The mannerisms were amazing. I thought it, it, he was chillingly like him, didn't you? He was chillingly like him, but I think I agree with you that we were falling between two stools where the BBC want to dramatise it and yet they wanted no drama in it. Yeah. So what you got was... That's precisely what I didn't mean. really hear from the victims. Sorry, they got a couple of lines mm. at the beginning. Whereas when I was reading about it this morning it was saying every episode starts with the victims and that's very important and the victims are very important part of Steve Coogan agreeing and all of that mm. and I don't think we we didn't get it enough no didn't except of course all the people that we saw was then revealed that it was the people that we heard right at the beginning I think it, I think when they cut they cut it about it I think it was about half hour, half an hour through they cut to the archive to remind us of his fame and how he was certainly when uh, Savile got his hair bleached and all that kind of stuff I thought that was a really good and salient moment to kind of remind us of the archive. I personally wonder whether they should have gone more docudrama on this. I think maybe no, it they... just just felt like a drama to me with a sort of literally a bit of salt and pepper of documentary. No, I agree. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I think I think it would have it benefited would have benefited a lot. I think basically for me right now, it's not dramatic enough to even achieve the thing that they're arguing they're trying to achieve by making it. No. It's like you either make a drama or you don't make a drama, and they are hesitantly. And even in the performance, the scenes are slow. It's it's leaden because, of course, if, imagine approaching a scene about Jimmy Savile and going, "Oh, I think we need to speed this up and make it more interesting." That, in in and of itself, is a brutal choice, isn't it? Karen Ula says it's drama series that will increase ratings, not because the BBC are caring. Mm, mm. Mm. Interesting. Lee Savile had a strange relationship with his mother. That was interesting to me. Yes, very strange. I tell you the other thing that's just really interesting from an expectation point of view. You know, when you see like any kind of crime series or, or series about sort of like serial killers and what have you, there's usually an aspect to it where you know that they're going to get caught. This is one of the weirdest stories in that he never, not a single thing comes to light in his life. 
So you're watching this knowing he's never going to get caught or brought no, to justice. So which weird. is kind of curious, isn't it? He's going to get away. He got away with all of it. Could you argue he's just going to get away with it again? Horrible. Yeah. Anyway. Really horrible. We will be watching, obviously, more. Um, yeah, I would share your th Oedipus comp complex as Anne-Marie Lucker. Um, yeah, I, I am wondering that. Um, I mean, I thought... Yeah, they were incredible, actually, the girl, young girls. Good point, you yeah. played them. They really were. They got us just all so... Oh, mm. shivering for them. You mm. Actually, that's true. I'm glad you point that. They were very good, the, mm. the girls. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Mm. Actually, all the acting was very good. No, there was I... nobody that was weak. Well, I, Steve, Coog I th yeah. and I thought the guy who was interviewing Steve Coogan was was, was yeah. fantastic too. Yeah, no, um, I can't place where I know. Part of me wonders whether another slight little mistake here, or not mistake, but difficulty, is that this is told from the perspective of someone asking Jimmy Savile, talking about Jimmy Savile's life. I can't work out whether the point of view or the perspective on this is a bit strange. Whether it it needed to come maybe more from a victim's point of view, because it's not really... It's curious, you know, the device of him interviewing him and him telling his story, giving him ownership in some way. Because I don't feel mm, at the moment think, in one episode... No, but I haven't... think what we're seeing is just how unbelievably controlling and arrogant he was through that. Yeah, yeah, but... And this is the true story. This is mm. what happened. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. OK, all right, guys. Well, look, keep your thoughts coming and we'll be watching again, uh, obviously, next week. Um, share your thoughts. Do you think the same thing? Do you think that it's fall it's it's falling between two stalls? It, it's seeking to make drama, but it doesn't want to be seen to be, to be exploiting drama, drama yeah. for obvious reasons. And we all sort of thought that could be the problem. See you tomorrow. No night, guys.